Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel now. Today we are going to talk something about the topics that teens are very much interested in and uh, I'm, I'm sure they are not interested but they are forced to be, uh, you know, to be interested or to know more about their learnings. So today it's since uh, this is the month of December and Jan, Feb and March is going to be very, very, uh, you know, uh, complex for all the teens because it's at this time they are really serious about their studies and uh, they are very much concerned about uh, uh, their board exams or sometimes even the final exams. So based on that exclusively for teens, I want to come up with the session because this is going to really help them in how to facilitate themselves in learning and uh, how to how to score better in their exams. So I'm going to give my insights on all these things so that they can come up with uh, flying colors and have some better results in their exams as well. Based on that, my uh, experiences and also I want to share some of the tips which can really help them in uh, uh, in their upcoming exams. So if you have a teen at home, let them watch this particular leaf, uh, live streaming because this is going to really help them a lot. And I'm sure it can it can bring some changes in their life uh, based on uh, uh, these uh, studies and what has to be considered during their exams, what, what they have to take care about their exams. So this is what we have right now. Uh, the very first thing about learning, as far as learning is concerned, you might have seen that your, you are able to score better when you have, when you have interest in that particular subject. But if you are not interested in any particular subject, what happens is we we don't score well, neither we score well, nor are we getting tempted to learn about that particular subject. We don't feel like touching that books at all, right? But when it comes to learning about any film dialogues or songs, we are able to retain things in a better way. Have you ever experienced that? If you have experienced, just type yes, because this is the problem of most of the uh, teens or students. So what happens is children are not able to get that particular interest in learning and uh, the particular subject it may be due to many other reasons. The main thing that helps in learning is our brain, right? Our brain is the one that helps. But what happens is our brain is just three pounds in weight. Our brain is just three pounds and what happens are the entire energy that is required for uh, the whole body. It is getting only, you know, 10% of or 10 times more energy is used or it is uh, accumulated by the brain itself. So I can say that it is, you know, almost 10 times energy the brain is consuming. Okay, so the entire body, what is what is uh, you know using the energy? We have we need to consume, we need to give that, or we need to preserve that ten percent of energy or ten times more energy for the brain. So you mean to say how you can understand how complex our brain is? Better or it is more complex than any other digital computers? I can say because the way we run, eat, ha stand, and all the all these things, what we do brain is uh, playing a greater role in all that things and now when you do that the the uh, child or the person who is doing that particular thing is far far better than any other computers on earth so we have to understand that brain our brain is something that helps us to learn things and also disassociate us from learning or it keeps us away from learning so what is that? Why is that we are interested in one particular thing and not interested in, in, in some other subjects? Because what happens, our brain actually is associating certain things as a pain and sometimes some things as pleasure. Some things we like and some things we don't like. Now, liking and disliking may be due to many factors. It may be because we don't like the particular subject I'm not scoring well in that subject. I don't understand it. Or my teacher is not good. My teacher doesn't love me or care or she's very strict. That's why I don't like her. So many, many factors which can uh, come up with all these things. So what happens is many reasons are there, but 
ultimately we like certain things and we don't like now mind is associating our brain is associating pain with certain things and the brain says no now you cannot read this don't read this you can do this one or better you can you can you can uh, you know use that particular time and uh, learn something else or sometimes you know that kind of procrastination not now maybe later little later little later so what happens our mind is procrastinating all these things because it is associating pain along with it now when you have that pain it is very difficult for us for uh, you know to subconsciously train our mind and uh, go deep into that particular level so in order to do that we need some techniques which can help us in uh, learning in a better way so when you tell that our mind uh, when you tell your mind or i can say some cheat codes that i can give you which can help you to get that particular interest just for a time being that is you can you can make it very simple what happens is i as i told you brain is very complex and our mind is also complex we we feel you know that uh, 10% of conscious mind and the energy what we have is not enough so subconsciously whatever we have that energy is 90% higher that's why our subconscious mind is always telling don't go for it don't learn math because math is something that is very difficult don't go for it you'll not be getting the answers now when you tell that what happens you are again and again programming your mind not to go for it mind is or the brain is giving you informations or signals that you don't go you will not be getting anything out of it now so when you say all that what happens the the mind is again you know it is not getting proper uh, programs it's not getting pro uh, proper programming to go forward or to get into that particular level so we need to understand what has to be done to program our mind so i'm going to tell you a small technique a cheat code i can say that can help you in bringing out all these issues the first thing is cheat your own mind isn't that interesting how to cheat your mind so you have to tell your yourself that i am going to learn only one chapter today i'm going to learn only one chapter and that is only for 30 minutes only for 30 minutes i'm going to sit and do it so what happens now the mind is prepared okay the mind says okay rest of the time you are free you have to sit only for 30 minutes now what happens 30 minutes but you have to use that 30 minutes with focused uh, action like that is you have to be very very focused in that 30 minutes now i have a, another small technique that you can do simultaneously that is cheating your own mind along with the pomodoro technique a small technique which can help you build that consistency and that interest so what do you do for that the very first thing that you need to do is set a timer it's a pomodoro technique was used it is an italian language or italian word which means timer or i can say i mean uh, pomodoro means a tomato but there was a tomato kind of a timer which was placed and based on that this technique was named so pomodoro is nothing but a timer that you need to place a small timer that you need to place in front of you for 30 minutes or 45 minutes if you feel that you can stretch for a little longer time you can place it for 45 minutes but see to it that you are free from all kinds of distractions at that time i'm going to tell you how to do that but the thing is we need to understand this particular technique is very very important for those who really want to focus in their studies and do something better in their exams if you really want that particular changes in your studies or you want to facilitate your learning styles or you want to facilitate your child's learning that can happen when you do this pomodoro technique it's a small technique that we have and i'm i'm just going to try to share it with you what you need to do so in between you just have to take small break now how to do that take a to do list the first thing is take a to do list what are you supposed to do what are you supposed to do at this particular point of time how much task or what are the tasks that you want to complete in this particular time you have to take that particular list now set a time for it now how much do i need what is the time that i time limit that i need to complete this particular task one particular subject or one one chapter how much do i need to how much what are the things i need to do this is something that we have to understand when you do that when you try to consider one particular subject at 
maybe 10 minutes or 15 minutes or maximum 30 to 45 minutes when you do that your mind is programmed the mind says only 30 minutes i can do it okay only 15 minutes i can do it initially you can start with 15 minutes if you're not able to stretch that particular time because we know that right now our attention span is less than seven seconds because of the reels and the shots that we have here so uh, even i can say it is lesser than the goldfish which is there in our aquarium right now so uh, the seven seconds we have to stretch up to 30 to 40 minutes so it's not that easy i understand that but still we have that capacity to do it so now what do we do first is I said to take a to-do list and share a timer or set some kind of uh, time as, as convenient as you are convenient about. Next is focus on one particular task. Don't have multiple tasking or don't go for it. It is only one particular task that you need to consider. Now, when you do that, take one time, one thing at a time. For 30 minutes, only one chapter I'm going to use or I'm going to study. Once you're done with that 30 minutes, take, take a marker and make and just mark it. One Pomodoro done. Completed one Pomodoro. So it means Pomodoro means it's nothing but a timer. So one timer I have completed. So successfully, if you have done it for 30 minutes, mark it. Otherwise, you have to do it again. 30 more minutes. So that's how you need to do. But the thing is, when you mark that and when you mark that particular 30 minutes, enjoy five minutes break. Enjoy five minutes where you can just close your eyes or sit quietly or you can even even get some exercises done or drink a glass of water and come back, relax and sit for five minutes without doing anything. I'm going to talk about sleeping also here, but you have to see to it that you're doing nothing at that particular time because rest is mandatory. So 30 minutes or 45 minutes of work and then take rest for five minutes. This is very much essential. Now start another task after this. After 30 minutes, now you say 30 more, I can do it. No problem. So convince your own mind to do that. Convince your mind to do it. Once, I'm sorry for my pet here. You're getting some noise background. So this is my pet. I, I cannot stop him from doing such chopping sounds in the morning. I can't help it. I'm really sorry for that. So what happens is uh, you have to start with another task. But now when you try to uh when you try to do that particular task again you have to program your mind and cheat your mind tell him that okay now it is 30 more minutes i can do it no problem so when i've done this i have successfully done this now i have to take and do something else so see to it when you're doing it you you set aside all that distractions away from you because you should not have your mobiles with you your tvs or anything with you just focus on one particular task and that's it you cannot have any kind of uh, distractions in between. No phone calls, no chats, no asking questions, no, nothing. You are simply going and chatting or asking the questions with your, clearing the doubts with your friends. Don't do it at that particular point of time. You can do it later on when the task is done. You are, you are completing you are completing one particular subject. Then you can ask the doubts that are there. So the remaining things what are not done, you can do it meanwhile after you finish this. So if you really have some doubts regarding this, you are free to ask in the chat box as well. Okay. Uh, so after that, you need to have some restorative breaks in between. That is, as, as I said, five times or 10 times once, once you have that uh, break or sorry, your task is completed, at least four tasks are completed or four Pomodoro tasks is completed. Then you need to have that restorative break. This break should be at least for 30 minutes. I'm telling you this because it needs rest. You know, your mind needs rest. I'm talking, I'll be talking about the sleep. So once that rest is needed for the brain and you give that adequate time for it to get the toxins away, then your mind is always fresh and it, it is urging to do something more, something more creative, something more lively. You can go for it. So that's what we need to do in the initial days. So why this sleep is necessary? I'm going to talk about this now. Why do you need sleep? Because more often we consider, how many of you consider that uh, sleeping is a waste of time? Ch type in the chat box, me. Yes, if you consider that uh, 
sleep is a waste of time my son sleeps a lot my teenager sleeps a lot this is something that is having in the mind or if you are a teenager watching this particular video don't consider yourself or don't undermine yourself even if you're sleeping but sleeping for a longer time of course it, it brings some adverse effect but then if you are awake for a long time being awake for a long time without sleep makes your uh, brain poisonous i just recently had a reel on this and shots on this also you can watch that but the thing is i want to tell you that this particular poisonous brain works no good if you are all the time working working and working or all the time awake and no sleep so this what happens your brain cells are getting expanded when you're working okay brain cells are getting expanded when you work and so the sleep is turning out all that poisonous or toxins th that are there in the brain now the brain will be shrinking coming uh, brain cells will be shrinking i'm sorry the brain cells will be shrinking and it comes to the normal size and then as if you know there are some spaces in between and a fluid is passed all these uh, cells and washing away all that particular toxins away from the brain can you imagine the brain and the cells inside they were expanding when you're learning something when you're doing some task and then when you're slowly uh, sitting for rest or taking rest what happens the cells are getting shrinking in size are shrinking in size and then you have some space in between the brain so what a fluid something a kind of a fluid is coming and just taking out all that toxins away and you know it is passed all through that particular cells now can you imagine why sleep is needed sleep is mandatory i would say to take rest so we actually need to take rest and re without sleep what happens if you don't sleep now without sleep the child may be having headaches or it may be some heart related issues also or sometimes even diabetes is affected due to lack of sleep so we have to we have to see to it that you are not having this kind of uh, anxiety issues or depression when you have you know less sleep you have when, when there's no adequate sleep it is very difficult and you get all these symptoms very easily so try to understand the point that sleep is very important when you learn it's an important factor of learning also so uh, even memory you know you you can enhance your memory through sleep it was there was a research done that uh, what happens to the brain when you are lying still so we could see that part of our brain was active even during the uh, sleep or even when we were lying down and doing nothing part of our uh, brain cells were still active during that time so can you imagine now why brain needs that particular rest that's why almighty has blessed us with nights and days you know what you need to do adequate sleep at night so teens must have at least 8 hours of sleep at least 8 hours of sleep teens must have so see to it that you sleep by 9 o'clock or 9:30 i'm sorry so if you have any device at home or you have you have really got addicted to devices or you feel that i cannot sleep without watching my mobiles make sure this you have to you have to again shift that particular changes or you have to try to bring that changes in your life as well because devices having devices with you is going to be really pro problematic for your studies and also for the development of your brain your brain cannot easily develop when once you have um once you have this particular uh, you know devices along with you when you sleep so at least we have to see that 60 minutes at least one hour before sleep and one hour after sleep we should avoid our devices this is very very important avoiding device before and after sleep makes our level makes our uh, uh, you know our uh, uh brain and also our uh, physical and mental health also uh, gets um you know developed or it improves a lot so physical exercises also will stimulate your brain now 
you may be telling me that why should I have no time to finish my portions? I have no time to complete my studies and how will I do it? So when you complete your task, at least when you when you have your physical exercises, it easily stimulates, stimulates your mind and helps you grow, helps you uh, retain things very easily. So you're able to focus in a better way. You're able to understand the concepts in a better way. Okay, so this is what we need to do. It helps you think in a creative way and also it can help you in all your co-curricular activities. What do you need to do? How can you do it? Uh, something new, what can you do? So all that creativity, that liveliness you get once you start your physical exercise, you can see that changes right away. You can join some clubs, sport clubs or something and get that discipline in you. Once you start having discipline in your life, you will be able to uh, achieve or you can you can you can uh, I, I would say accomplish something greater in life once you start seeing that particular changes in your life now I would like to say something about chunking or see what happens is when we are learning something new concept it is as if I would like to put it as an analogy or an example as um, if I bring some puzzles or the I mean, jumbled puzzle pieces, jumbled puzzle pieces. How will it seem to you? If I bring that particular junk of uh, puzzle pieces and keep it in front of you, how will you feel? Of course, there's no structure. There is no plan, right? So this is what we feel. Why this is happening or, you know, what kind of uh, pattern this is. It's just so confusing. Mind perceives the same when you see a new chapter. When you, when you want to learn something new, this is what is happening. Now, what we need to do is bring it to a meaningful structure or a pattern. Only then the mind can feel, okay, this is easy. I can learn. Now, to bring to that particular thing or if your mind should get that particular leap, then we have to divide it into chunks, a small, small group or bits of information are gathered together and formed a new meaning to it. This is what we need to do when we are learning something new concept or new chapter. So chunking is very important. Now, how do we do it? Take a small, now if you have chapters, a big chapter and you are feeling very much confused about it, Take small chapters. See, memorizing a big, big, uh, you know, uh, chapters will not create any changes in you. You are ultimately going to end up having a lot of problems in your life. That is, you're not able to complete that particular portion. You cannot understand the meaning of it. This is causing a lot of trouble. So we need to have a mental leap that can help you unite or, you know, Take out all that, gather all that bits of information, give it a particular meaning, understand, and then proceed with it. This is how we need to do. Now, to, uh, to get closer into all these things, take small chapters, I mean, small uh, introduction part, or maybe one part, or one segment of your uh, uh, chapter, and Create small, small, maybe keynote or maybe uh, you can you can you make a note of the keywords there. Create some stories or I would say some uh, memory techniques that you can help uh, yourself to retain things in a better way. So inshallah, I'm going to come up with some memory techniques in the upcoming, the next session inshallah, which is really helpful for teens also. I'm going to come up with all that in my uh, next uh, live streaming inshallah. So if you have not watched, if you if you are ready to watch that, just type in ready if you really are willing to know more about it. So once you uh, learn about the memory techniques, you will be able to retain things in a better way, right? So this becomes habitual and later on your mind is programming your, your uh, you know, learning styles and your learning abilities. And this becomes very easy for getting new things done. So chunks of information you have to gather, prepare a meaning out of it or get a meaning out of it, maybe a story wise, or you can use it something like uh, the, uh, the Kessel technique that we have in the, uh, you know, memory techniques. So you can use that or some kind of, uh, you know, as if some neurons are to be fired. 
to get it, you know, some, some neurons, some neural pathways are created when you learn something. So in a beautiful way, so that you can, in a unique way, you can remember certain things, some unrealistic stories also you can create and then, you know, make out of it some better content and give it a meaning and just feed your brain. That's it. Once you start that, your mind captures that thing. Pictures are captured in the form of a picture. These concepts are captured. It becomes very easy for you to retain in a better way. So more often, we have students used to tell me when I was uh, in the teaching field, when I was a lecturer, to, students used to come and tell me, ma'am, I knew the answer until, you know, I was revising so much. I knew that answer until I was there in the examination hall. But once I saw the papers, I forgot. Now, this has happened with many of us, right? Even we have experienced the same thing. And the moment we come out of the examination hall, we remember that particular answer. It's all because our mind already has that particular information, but it doesn't know how to reproduce it. That's the reason we are not able to express or in writing, we were not able to do it. At that particular time, I didn't retain things. So it all happens because you have not stored that in a particular way that you can remember it. It's very simple. And easy, I'm going to tell that tasks also, inshallah, uh, in the upcoming things. So we need to understand that procrastination is not, or, you know, you can't call yourself to be lazy. Of course, your parents might have told you that teens are always lazy. Why people are doing this? Why are you, why are you so lazy? Why are you uh, not having that self-control over yourself? So it's, it's all about, it's, it's nothing to do with self-control. It's nothing to do with laziness. Procrastination is all about the interest that matters. So you are not procrastinating to watch mobile, right? You're very crisp. You're very active to take out that mobile and search for the notifications. Once you get that notification, what do you need to do and all that stuff? You're very crisp, very smart. Why does it happen? That means procrastination, you don't have, you don't have to do anything with procrastination with your laziness, but it's all about your own willingness to do things. So this is very important and all of us need to take care of these particular things when we are sitting and learning something new. So this, I've been telling this to my children also, I've been using this to my children also, with my children also, start programming your mind. This is very important for a student or a teenager especially to program your mind initially. Once you do that, you will be focusing in a better way, helping yourself to score in a better position. Okay. So with this, I would like to wind up the session in case you have any doubt regarding uh, the learning styles or any other uh, learning uh, uh, capabilities, what you have, you can, you can just, uh, you know, type it in the comment section. Inshallah, I'm going to come up with the answers or I would, I would reply for your uh, queries. Inshallah. Okay. So, okay. Thank you for joining. Whoever has joined, do let me know where have you joined from so that I would be really pleased to, uh, you know, serve in a better way, inshallah. Okay. So with this, I would like to wind up the session. Thank you. Thank you for joining.